the American Heart Association, ACLS Shockable Rhythm Protocol, focusing on three concepts, the two-minute interval, pre-charging the defibrillator, and give a drug, prep a drug. A CPR cycle, as you know, is 30 compressions and two breaths. Five cycles comprise a two-minute interval. Two-minute interval. We'll use this term. You might also hear two-minute period or two-minute round. Keep in mind that a cycle and a two-minute interval are two different components of the BLS-ACLS framework. An ACLS two-minute interval for the shockable rhythm protocol, will say, goes from one shock to the next. And here's the pattern. A shock, and then the team leader can say, shock delivered, resume CPR. After the first shock in the rescue sequence, no drug is given, but thereafter, we'll give a drug immediately after the shock so that it has the full two-minute interval to circulate and to take effect prior to the next rhythm check. After giving a drug, and with the drug sequence still in mind, let's assume this same rhythm will persist, and we'll prepare the drug to be used in the next two-minute interval. Coming up on two minutes, we can pre-charge the defibrillator to minimize hands-off-the-chest time. Once the defibrillator is charged, the team leader can say, hold compressions for rhythm, pulse, and breath check. And then, with, say, V-fib on the monitor, the team leader can tell the shock person, as opposed to the drug person, the airway person, the chest compressor person, and the recording person, to administer the shock. The shock person clears and then delivers the shock. Here's a non-responsive patient. As I tap and shout to gauge responsiveness, breathing, not breathing, or gasping agonal breathing is noted. I call for help based on no response to tapping and shouting. Then I feel for a pulse for up to 10 seconds. Notice that we don't feel for a pulse until after we've called for help for the non-responsive patient. There's no pulse. I initiate CPR. Help arrives. The defibrillator monitor is turned on. The pads are placed. We pre-charge, minimizing hands-off time. With the sound of the defibrillator indicating full charge, the team leader can say, hold compressions for rhythm, pulse, breath check. V-fib. So, while it was smart to have team members set to check for them, with V-fib, we know we don't have to spend time checking for pulse and breath. Let's deliver the shock. Shock delivered. Resume CPR. No drug is given. Shock, shock, epi. After the first shock, no drug. After the second shock, one milligram of epi, or 40 units of vasopressin. Shock, shock, epi. No drug after the first shock. The rationale. Recovery via shock is most likely to occur after the first shock. So, let's avoid epinephrine-induced increased cardiac workload and hypertension. Let's avoid MI and stroke. As a matter of fact, drugs used during cardiac resuscitation are not that effective, not nearly as effective as shocking and high-quality CPR. Indeed, some studies are showing that epinephrine might do more harm than good. But let's work together on our timing and the two-minute interval so we can keep our heads clear for looking for a cause, optimizing CPR quality, and efficient delivery of shocks. No drug is given during the first two-minute interval, but let's prepare epi for the next interval. Coming up on two minutes, pre-charge, hold compressions, V-fib. Shock 2 delivered. Resume CPR. Give the epi prepared earlier, and let's prepare amiodarone for later. Easy to remember. Give a drug, prep a drug. Coming up on two minutes. Precharge. Hold compressions. V-fib. 
Shock number three delivered. Resume CPR with a different compressor person. Give the Amio prepared earlier. And let's prepare Epi for later. Coming up on two minutes. Precharge. Hold compressions for rhythm, pulse, breath check. V-fib. Shock person will shock. And you've got the pattern. Looking at the epinephrine and amiodarone dosing schedules. Every three to five minutes. Let's pick four minutes. Two two-minute intervals adds up to four minutes. And this is one way that the two-minute interval helps us organize our thinking, making it easy to keep track of the vasopressor and antiarrhythmic drug dosing schedules. After the first shock, no drug. After shock two, epi. After shock three, amio. Then epi, then amio. By following this sequence, we know that epi doses are four minutes apart, and we know that amio doses are four minutes apart. So, epinephrine, one milligram, and amiodarone alternate. The amiodarone dosage sequence is 300 milligrams, 150 milligrams, and then, for the third use, one milligram per minute IV infusion. Energy dosage, 120, 150, then repeat the maximum of 200 joules thereafter. The Zoll defibrillator can be preset so that this sequence is automatically followed. The team now has agreed on the parameters and the framework. Can we do this with alacrity and precision?